is we look at Chinese corn supplies listed by USDA. <clears throat> USDA does not include reserve corn. Excuse me, USDA has them dropping to an 89-day supply in the 2018-19 marketing year. And I drew the red line on here because that goes back to uh, uh, a dozen years ago was the level at which when stocks got to that level where China started opening the floodgate to allow imports of corn. Uh, and so the question is, will they do that same thing again? Keep in mind, this doesn't include the reserve corn, although we don't know what the quality of that reserve corn is or what the size of it is. Now, if you look at global corn supplies, they're at a 53-day supply you see here on the right-hand side. 53-day supply. That's pretty good historically. Remember back in the mid-80s when it was 100 and about 165-day, 167-day supply? So that's pretty much uh, pretty tight, getting pretty tight in the year ahead. If you remove China from the balance sheet and remove the United States from the balance sheet to see how the rest of the world's doing, well, then we're at a 39-day supply. That matches up where we were, what, about six years ago when we had record high corn prices. So the world is comfortable with just-in-time supplies as long as they know they can get it from the United States. But our stocks are getting tighter. More on that here in a little bit, but basically you saw that in the previous slide earlier, several slides back, that I'm projecting ending stocks of 1.484 billion bushels. The comfort level is at about 1.5 billion, so that's dropping below that. USDA is still a little above that at 1.6 billion. But we're getting really close to that comfort level. So now it wouldn't take much of a drop because of adverse weather to get this market excited. I can hear the farmers out there now saying, Suderman says corn's going to $8. I didn't say that, but I did say if you're an end user, or I am saying if you're an end user, that there is upside risk in this market you need to be aware of. 